Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to Kosminski University. I'm sorry that I was not able to be here as in the preliminary program as a keynote speaker at the opening session, but at that time I was concluding my keynote speech at the Istanbul Eurasia Economic Summit. There was much more of politics than economics at that summit, but Eurasia is very important from whatever perspective one will take a look. We have agreed with the host, the organizers of this summit, of this conference, to call my brief keynote the new pragmatism as a response to global challenges. There are so many challenges that when I was walking here, I was thinking, is it really 2022 the most challenging year in my life, which is so far quite short. I feel still very young, but I have experienced um, a little bit. We are meeting today on June the 9th, but three days ago, it was exactly one third of a century since February the 6th of 1989. We're not far away from here in the building, in the palace where now is the office of the President of the Republic of Poland, we sat down with the Poles around the table and we pushed forward the wheel of the history, moving first Poland and then East Central Europe and then quite a lot other territories going to the west stream of the Pacific towards transformation, transition to market economy, civic society, and political democracy. And at that time, there was rather a very positive mood going all the way from Washington, Western Europe, through Eurasia, to the Japan and elsewhere, that there is the end of the Cold War. And it was even declared by the great American political writer Frank Fukuyama, that it is the end of the history. And now we see how many problems we do have. In my recent book about the future of the world, I'm talking about seven mega trends, giga trends, which are shaping the reality. But everything is in the context that is my presumption, that is my thesis, which I'm trying to prove using the arguments that globalization is a reversible process. Not more than a day ago, I read an essay by the intellectual leader and the founder of this university, Professor Kosminski, in Polish, when he says, and I disagree with Professor Kosminski, that this is the end of globalization. The Cold War, the hot war in Ukraine, the this crisis and that crisis, this is the end of globalization. Globalization will continue because of the power of trade, because of the meaning of supply chain, because of non-economic factors. We love world culture, we love to travel, and business is a beneficiary of globalization, and for that reason, against all the political winds, I think it will take over. But of course, there are turbulences. There are the problems, there are ups and downs, mostly recently more downs than ups. So what are these mega trends? First, these are the demographic changes. Uh, we continue the flight of the moth to the fire by decrease, increasing too fast the number of the people. When the first industrial revolution took off, there was one billion people, and in two years' time, there will be eight billion people, and there is a very great imbalance because the rate of fertility goes from 1.1 in Singapore to 6.8 in a very poor, one of the poorest countries in the world, Niger. It is unsustainable. It fuels the, the people migration to, very, to, to richer countries, not only because of the ethnic or military conflict, which is also the case of my country of Poland recently because of the uh, disgraceful Russian invasion of uh, Ukraine, which pushed many people to leave the place of the 
bird, but elsewhere by the miserable economic conditions. And now in some parts of the world, the situation, the situation does deteriorate with the fuel and immigration still farther. Uh, we are aging, which is good news if one is healthy and wealthy, and not necessary if one is lacking the resources to provide everything what is the necessities to sustain the life um, at the late uh, age. Second great problem, this is the environment change. There is a great deal of knowledge about that. Let me only touch the issue of depletion of non-renewable resources and the warming of the climate, and I will come to this point at the conclusion. The third one is non-inclusive globalization. Globalization does continue, yet as a slower pace than before. So what is globalization? Globalization is a historical and spontaneous process of liberalization and integration. Of thus far performing to the extent national economies, branches, branches of uh, divisions of industries and services into one inter interconnected, intertwined worldwide. Global economy, what happens here is depending on what has happened somewhere and is causing some results elsewhere. And per se, it is good for economic growth and economic development, what that does mean that for everybody, and somebody is the loser, depends on the business strategy, it depends on the economic policy strategy. When I was in charge of Polish economy as Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, my program was called Strategy for Poland. It was absolutely with priority to, for Polish, for my country, my, my people, our businesses, our territory, our culture, our economy, and so on, but not by turning the back against the word protectionism, xenophobia, or um, ill-advised economic, so-called economic patriotism, but by the means to integrate, first of all, of course, with the European Union, because we are here in the very heart of the Europe, but in the world economy as is such. But it has happened because of the very much influential neoliberalism, which is the theory and practice of wrong deregulation and, and manipulation of the fiscal system, taxes, transfers, and expenditures to, to enrich, uh, enriching the few at the cost of many that Globalization became somehow also going along the line of neoliberalism and for, many, for that reason some regions, some social strata were rather the losers. And the action is causing reaction. People are angry, people are going to the street. They put on the yellow vest or they occupy London or they occupy Wall Street. Somebody has already forgotten that it was only a couple of years ago, okay? Don't wait too long, you will see they will be again on these squares and on these streets because they have very many reasons, not only the economic one and so on, and they are fighting against. And the politicians which are not able to deliver, which are not up to the challenge, are saying, well, it is because of globalization. No, it is because of the wrong economic policy response to the conditions of globalization because some countries, as different as Poland for most of the recent 33 years, or the uh, great successful, from economic growth perspective, China, or small countries like, say, Singapore, or big uh, 100 million plus people, almost like uh, Vietnam, they show that they may combine with different political systems, democracy or meritocratic-based authoritarian regime to take globalization to their, uh, to their advantage. And then we have the fourth mega process, which is the technological progress. Mostly good news are coming from here, but do not make a mistake. Technological problems is able to solve a plethora of problems we do have, but definitely not all of them. There will be lack of certain resources, which we feel already. For instance, certain metals uh, of the uh, air, 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 earth, which are a must for um, digitalization of the economy for, for the hardware or for transfer to the green uh, renewable technologies and so on. And it's also some other problems on the social side of our performance, 
say, people's surveillance and so on. But in the long run, technological progress is actually the one of these mega seven trends in which we can put a trust and a little bit of confidence and optimism. And then the fifth one is the crisis of neoliberal capitalism. I have defined what I mean. I said what I mean about neoliberalism. And you may see the failure of this capitalism starting from our European Union, at least part of it, or the United States, especially on the disastrous presidency of Donald Trump. And when I hear that it is possible that he will be running again, and then he can come back to White House, uh, that would be the horrible news, at least according to my values and my approach to the economic and uh, sense of world economy. And then there is the sixth process, which is shaping the reality. This is the crisis of liberal democracy. 33 years ago here, we didn't use the term. We were going to democracy. That was enough. Then we learned that there is something like liberal democracy because we have learned that there is also something like illiberal democracy. Not far away, for instance, under Mr. Orban in uh, Hungary. But I would say that in more and more of the countries there is the less of this liberal democracy, and in some countries of different type, democracy has failed. Recently, in developing countries, say in Liban or in Sri Lanka, but I would say that actually what is going on in the United States is also a failure of liberal democracy. They are not able to solve such a basic problem like avoiding killing the kids, the pupils in the primary school, because there is democracy. They have accepted the bill in the House of Representatives, and it will be rejected according to this democracy in the Senate, because this is how democracy works, which is in our culture something unthink unthinkable, but is something which is obvious across the Atlantic Ocean. But on the economic side, we see that there is more and more economic problems, which we see now, and they are looking for somebody to blame with Inflation, risk of stagflation, actually we do have stagflation already if it is defined as the process of acceleration of the price rise and at the same time slowing down of the rate of economic growth, not literally stagnation, that is zero growth and inflation. Again, it depends very much on definition. And then there is the conclusion is everything is bringing me to the conclusion that the biggest challenge is warming the climate. And I'm saying that there is very unlikely, if possible, very unlikely, that we, the mankind, the humanity, the civilization of 22nd century, will be able to counteract warming of the climate, which is going on in democratic and peaceful way without turning down military build up. And now we are continuing the suicide day after day. In Poland, one of the most stupid decisions which the parliament could took, it was taken a couple of months ago. There was not a single vote against, either in our house or in the upper house. Not a single one. They raised the military expenses called defense to 3% of GDP. That's the share. If you are raising the share from 2% to 3%, you should be honest and you should say to the people where you are going to cut by 1% point. Is it culture or education? Is it healthcare or infrastructure? Is it environment or, or sub subsistence support for knowledge-based economy? I never heard a word about that. Where it's coming from? 30 billion zlotys next budget year to pay for that. By raising the taxes or by raising the public debt? I heard no word about that. So it is going all over the world and there is the military built up, there is the military race because we are in the new Cold War, since a couple of years, I refer to it as the second Cold War because the first was over because of our range table and some good political leaders 
at third, uh, one third of a century ago. So to put it in a nutshell, we are aging, which is good news. But aging is costly also for the public finance because it imposes a burden of the healthcare. There is different system of healthcare in US and in Poland or in China and in Germany, but everywhere it is very costly for public finance. And it is going to increase objectively as long as we are be aging. There are some other costs which are unavoidable on the public finance. Second, private business is not able to finance profit-based, on profit-based approach, the shift to renewable and green energy. It must be supported by the state on leadership, regulation, and financing. So we do need money. And now the money, where is the money? There is no money. They are saying that there is no money. So there is money. We are wasting a lot on military build-up in most of the countries of the world, in Russia and in US, in European Union, NATO members, and in China, in Poland and elsewhere. And we don't have enough money to uh, invest in green economy and uh, counteracting the warming of the climate. Only half a year ago, there was the, G, there was the COP, Con Conference of Partnership 26 in Glasgow. There was certain consensus. What we're supposed to do? We're supposed to cut the emission of carbon dioxide by 50% by 2030. On the, uh, by mid of 2022, only half a year after this summit in Glasgow, we are on track to raise it by 13%. Somebody says that it is already too late, but I'm not saying that it is too late, but that calls for leadership. What we are lacking is not the knowledge, it's lack of courage and political leadership. My last sentence is, it was also ridiculous to say 35 years ago, cut military expenses. At the peak of the, of the Cold War, it was impossible. But then what? They came Mr. Gorbachev. Mr. Reagan, with not so good Reaganomics on the economic side, but the proper approach to nonsense of military built up. There was a toucher, there was Mitterrand, there was call, and we cut with the mankind. The military expenses from $1.5 billion, dollars, trillion dollars in 1990 to one by one third in 1996. So we have to, mm, to do it again, even now when we have hot war in our, as our neighboring friendly country. It calls for commitment because otherwise there will be not enough money to finance unavoidable to survive warming of the climate. Otherwise, there will be really an economic catastrophe which from today's problems perspective will be uh, much, much more serious. It's an, it is av uh, avoidable. It is not unavoidable, it is avoidable, but it depends that they really will be not only more on knowledge-based economy, but also more of knowledge-based common sense, not emotional-based uh, politics. That is what we are lacking. Thank you.